Hello and welcome to our service this morning. It comes from the Timbridge Methodist Church's Zoom service on Sunday the 7th of May. Our service is led by Sharon Herlow and it's the fifth Sunday of Easter. And the service is entitled Pay Homage to the King. So over to you, Sharon. Morning. It's just really lovely to be with you this morning. And as Jeff said, it is the fifth Sunday of Easter, but it's also our coronation weekend. So hence the title of um, the service today, paying homage to the king. So let's just still ourselves for the moment for a moment, and then we will come to our call to worship and our first hymn. One Chronicles tells us this, it says, give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. So, Lord, we come before you this morning and we want to lift up your name with singing.
Let us pray together. Praise the Lord, you heavens, adore him. Praise him, angels in the heights. Sun and moon, rejoice before him. Praise him, all you stars and light. Praise the Lord, for he has spoken, worlds his mighty voice obeyed. Laws which never shall be broken, for their guidance he has made. Praise the Lord, for he is glorious. Never shall his promise fail. God has made his saints victorious. Sin and death shall not prevail. Praise the God of our salvation. Hosts on high his power proclaim. Heaven and earth and all creation. Lord and magnify his name. Worship, honour, glory, blessing. Lord, we offer to your name. Young and old, your praise expressing, join their saviour to proclaim. As the saints in heaven adore you, we would bow before your throne. As your angels serve before you, so on earth your will be done. Lord, we do come before you this morning wanting to lift your name on high, for you are glorious, you are victorious, you are an amazing God. Lord, we quite often do forget and we do go our own way. Lord, we need to come before you and we do need to bow before your throne. Lord, in a moment of quiet, we bring before you all those things that we have failed to do or the things that we have done that we should not. Lord, we bring before them we bring them before you now. Lord, your word, it tells us that if we come humbly before your throne, if we proclaim before you our faults and our wrongdoings, Lord, that you do forgive us, that you are just to forgive us. And Lord, our first reading this morning, which we read on this service, tells us just that. We're going to have our first reading this morning from Isaiah 6. And Dawn's going to read for us. Thank you, Dawn. Our reading comes from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 7 from the New Living Translation. Isaiah's cleansing and call. It was in the year King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a lofty throne and the train of his robe filled the temple. Attending him were mighty seraphim, each having six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. They were calling out to each other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's armies, the whole earth is filled with his glory. Their voices shook the temple to its foundations, and the entire building was filled with smoke. Then I said, it's all over. I am doomed, for I am a sinful man. I have filthy lips, and I live among a people with filthy lips. Yet I have seen the king the Lord of heaven's armies. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongues. He touched my lips with it and said, See, 
This coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven. The Lord will bless the reading of his word. We are now going to sing our next hymn, King of Kings, Majesty. King of Kings, Majesty, God of heaven, living in me, gentle Savior, closest friend, strong deliverer, beginning and end. All within me falls at your throne, your majesty. yesterday's coronation we glimpsed into Westminster Abbey and we went there and we witnessed the crowning of a king. We entered the throne room where King Charles was presented with regalia to demonstrate his position as king. A sword not of judgment but of justice, not of might but of mercy a royal robe of righteousness, a glove to show that authority should be held with gentleness and grace. And in contrast, Isaiah has a throne room vision of God and what he sees utterly terrifies him. We get no description of God other than him sitting on a throne high and lifted up and the train of his robe filling the temple. And we get a sense of his total perfect holiness. In the vision, Isaiah sees and hears angel-like creatures calling out holy, holy, holy in a constant praise to God. None can match God's holiness. He is set apart, totally different from us. 
And John Piper, in one of his commentaries, says of God's holiness, his holiness is what he is as God, which no one else is or ever will be. There was a response from Isaiah. When Isaiah sees a glimpse of this absolute holiness of God, he finds himself utterly devastated. He is completely flawed by a glimpse of the only perfect, holy, glorious, eternal God. And he cries out, woe is me. He recognizes that he is totally undone. He becomes instantly aware of his smallness and his frailty and totally aware of his inability to make himself right before such pure holiness. And he cries out, I am ruined. Isaiah feels a profound sense of almost dread in the prince presence of such a holy God. He is utterly ruined because he realizes that God is so totally perfect and pure and that he is, by comparison, unclean, impure, sinful, filthy and wretched, some translations say. And it made me think of a scene from one of the Chronicles of Narnia books by C.S. Lewis. And I think it helps us in a way to understand this holiness of God. In the book, speaking of whether or not Aslan, the lion who represents Jesus, is safe, Mr. Beaver says, safe? He said, don't you hear what Mrs. Beaver tells you? Who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe, but he is good. He's the king, I tell you. Now, our God is not safe. He is not some man in a white robe, sitting on a throne, listening to harp playing angels. When the seraphim called out to one another, the foundations of the temple shook, we're told. The whole place was filled with smoke. What Isaiah saw scared him. He was filled with holy awe and fear, fear of the Lord. John Piper again says that God's glory is the public display of the infinite beauty and worth of God, the radiance of his holiness. Isaiah saw the radiance of God's holiness and it shook him to his core. He recognized in that moment that he was a poor, wretched sinner. And because God is not safe, and because he, but because he is so utterly holy, Isaiah knew that he was undone. But God, but God made atonement for Isaiah. Rather than Isaiah trying to clean himself off and make himself presentable to the king of all creation, God himself made a way for Isaiah to be purified. God had made a way for Isaiah to be in his presence, to stand before God with no fault. And this passage tells us something really profound, I think. When you encounter a holy God, the only response is to cry out, Lord, have mercy, for I am a sinner. Yet, yet we can rejoice along with Isaiah that in the moment we see his glory and we see our sin, we're able to grasp 
the width and the length and the height and the depths of his love for us and the magnitude of his grace poured out for us through Jesus. Just as Isaiah was purified through God's touching his mouth with a coal from the altar, Jesus is the means by which we are declared righteous before a holy God, through Jesus alone. Jesus is the appointed means by which a holy God and a sinful man may meet. He is our only hope. And it is for this reason that God's ruining glory is also our true and eternal joy. Because by being ruined, we are made whole. By having a vision of God so large that we can never hope to stand right before him. We can never hope to attain or understand it. By seeing a God this big, we are ready to receive the grace of God through faith in Jesus. God's glory ruins our very small attempts to work our way into right standing with him. It compels us to sit back and to rest and be trusting in his grace. God's glory ruins and pulls down our pride and causes us to walk in humility. God's glory ruins our insecurity because we can stand confident in the forgiving work that he has done on our behalf. God's glory utterly ruins us and the result is pure joy. The Apostle Paul had a right vision of God's glory. And he writes in Ephesians something that should cause our hearts to sing. All praise to God, he says, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms, because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace that he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. Amen for that. Yesterday, we were invited to pay homage, to offer our allegiance to Charles for who he is and for his position. Today, surely, we need to go further when paying homage to the King of Kings. Surely we offer worship and adoration and we fall at his feet on the throne. And all that is within us should shout out for the eternal freedom and the peace that we are given through Jesus. Amen. Our next hymn is at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. <laughs>
Let us pray together. Lord, we come before you and we bring prayers of intercession. We think of our world, our country, our community and those we love and we bring them before you in prayer. God, our guiding light, there are many decisions we have to make along life's path. Decisions about our relationships with others, what to do with our money and our time, about how we should use our powers and about our relationship with you. Lord, enable us to draw closer to you. Enable us to hold on to this picture of your majesty and come before you humbly as we should. Lord, in Christ, you show us the way. We pray for the guidance that only you can give. Lord, this is our prayer. God, the source of all wisdom. There is so much we need to learn along life's path. We need to understand other people, the world around us and our place within it. And to seek a meaning and a purpose for our lives. And as we watched the coronation yesterday, Lord, we include here a prayer for our King. Loving God, come with your grace and your heavenly help to fill the hearts of your servant, King Charles. Anoint him with your Holy Spirit and lead him into all truth. Grant him wisdom to fulfill his calling, to promote freedom of conscience, generosity of spirit, and care for others from all nations. Give him strength for all the future holds, that in his thoughts, words, and actions, he may seek your honour and glory. Lord, bless Camilla, the Queen Consort, and all the royal family, that enriched by your presence, they may serve with faithfulness and in peace. Lord, we ask this in the name of him who is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Lord, in Christ, you show us truth and you give us wisdom and understanding. Lord, we pray. We pray that you alone give us these attributes that we need. This is our prayer. God, the giver of life, you have promised us everlasting life if we follow you along life's path. Through the bad times of sickness and sorrow and the good times where we are confident and filled with hope. Along the narrow way of dedication to you and the stony road of self-giving love. Lord, we pray for all those that we know and love that need a touch of your promised everlasting life right now, who need a touch of confidence or a touch of hope. Lord, we bring them before you. Reach out to them, we pray. 
meet them where they are. In Christ, you show us life. We pray for your guidance and we pray for the fullness of life that only you can give. This is our prayer. And we pray in the name of Jesus, the way, the truth and the life for all of the world. As we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen and lord we come before you now asking you to build your kingdom here as we sing together. In us, we see. 
Our second reading comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 4, verse, reading verses 1 to 11, and reading from the International Children's Bible. After this, I looked, and there before me was an open door in heaven. And I heard the same voice that spake to me before. It was the voice that sounded like a trumpet. The voice said, come up here and I will show you what must happen after this. Then the spirit took control of me. There before me was a throne in heaven. Someone was sitting on the throne. The one sat on the throne looked like precious stones, like jasper and carnelian. All around the throne was a rainbow, the cover, color of an emerald. Around the throne, there were 24 other thrones. There were 24 elders sitting on the 24 thrones. The elders were dressed in white and they had golden crowns on their heads. Lightning flashes and the noises of thunder came from the throne. Before the throne, there were seven lamps burning. These lamps are the seven spirits of God. Also, before the throne, there was something that looked like a sea of glass. It was like crystal. Around the throne on each side, there were four living things. These living things had eyes all over them, in front and in back. The first living thing was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had the face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of these four living things had six wings. The living things were covered all over with eyes, inside and out. Day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God all-powerful. He was, he is, and he is coming. The, these living things gave glory and honour and thanks to the one who sits on the throne. He is the one who lives forever and ever. And every time the living things do this, the 24 elders bow down before the one who sits on the throne. The elders worship him who lives forever and ever. They put their crowns down before the throne and say, Our Lord and God, you are worthy to receive glory and honour and power. You made all things. Everything exists and was made because you wanted it. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jeff. Now, nothing in his experience had prepared the Apostle John for what he was going to see and what was going to happen. He had been chosen by God to witness and to write about the revelation which God gave to him and how blessed we are to receive it. For this vision tells us what is, tells us ahead of its time what God's play, glorious plan is for us, what heaven could possibly be like. The aging John was shown a vision of heaven and witnessed sights of such amazing wonderment and awe. And at the start of chapter four, he is shown into the majestic and magnificent throne room of God. He sees the richness, the splendor, the utter majesty. As his eyes began to absorb the astonishing heavenly sights before him. John sees hosts of ministering angels together with these four living creatures that are around the throne. 
he saw that these four astonishing creatures were filled with great wisdom, with insight, with knowledge and with understanding, and that they worshipped the Lord Almighty unceasingly day and night, lifting up their united voices of praise to the Lord with a never ending anthem of worship and praise that one day will be on the lips of every creature in heaven and earth and under the earth. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and it nor has it entered into the imagination of man the wonderful things that God has prepared for all those who love him. Yet John saw it and John recorded it. Holy, holy, holy. Holy is the one and only Holy Father God. Holy is the unique Son of God whose name is love. And holy is his spirit filled with purity and grace who aids us in our walk towards him. He is holy in his majesty. He is holy in his person, holy in his works of his hands and the words of his mouth. He was holy throughout the ages of history. He will be holy into the eternity of the future. And he is holy in this present time and space. This, whom the choirs of heaven lift up day and night with their never ending shouts of praise, this is the one who stretched out his holy arms of love on a cruel cross to give himself totally so that all who believe in his name would not be condemned but have the light of life and the opportunity to be in heaven for eternity. Such is the amazing mystery of God. Let us pray. Holy God, there is none like you. You alone are worthy of all glory and praise. Lord, we thank you for our salvation and that we have been brought in, brought with the precious blood of Christ so that we too can sing with the angels in the eternal ages to come. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And our final hymn this morning is There is a Higher Throne.
And because of what Christ has done, Revelation 7 tells us this. They, we, stand before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with each and every one of you today as you seek him and remain by your side always. Amen. And we thank you for joining us this morning for our service. We thank you for joining with us in paying homage to our King Jesus. We ask and pray that you are blessed and that you can join us again soon. Goodbye for now. <laughs>